Welcome to Porting and Polishing Tips. Uh, you're here with TJ. You can find anything, any of the tools you see me use today online at CC Specialty Tool. And uh, you can reach us at 1-800-762-6995. But today we're not talking about tools. Today we're talking about the two-stroke cylinder. Now this is an example of a two-stroke cylinder. Beautiful, beautiful thing because it's efficient, uh, it's lightweight, it has a high power delivery, it's simplistic. Uh, just, there's a lot of things that I find very admirable about the two-strokes uh, motor. Now, two-strokes work based on these ports, you know, all these little Swiss cheese holes you see back in here. You'll have a piston moving up and down in here in the combustion chamber, and you'll have on the top here, you'll have a spark plug screwed in that uh, gives the spark and it spark and ignites it. And for the most part, that's uh, that's the beautiful simplicity of it. Now we're going to go over the set and these. Uh, I'm going to do a series here. We're going to go over the different ports. Now these ports, um, they can be basically grouped into intake, transfers. And exhaust port. This big dog here and here. Now, to the, right now we're going to go over the intake. Now, uh, and how it functions. Now, uh, there's a couple different types of intakes uh, on two strokes. This is a reed set up for a reed cage uh, intake. Now, what you have in this case is you have a reed cage that kind of set on here. It built between the carburetor or whatever, the carburetor and uh, the, the intake port. So and this reed cage is very simple. It's shaped almost like a wedge, and it has little valves on here that open when the air is being sucked in because of the vacuum that's created back here, or the uh, low pressure that's created. It's not really a vacuum, but the low pressure that's created back here. But anyway, opens up, and then as the piston descends, that back pressure causes them to close, closes this off, and then forces the uh, air-fuel mixture up into the transfers. But for right now, for the sake of this discussion we're going to talk about the intake. So that's one type, that's a reed valve. Now we can also have little ones like this which are fairly popular. And these are piston ported intakes because they are ultimately simple. The carburetor basically went along with the gasket bolts onto right here. As that piston ascends up and down the combustion chamber the skirt or the bottom of the piston moving past this port is what opens and closes it. As it moves up, it opens this up. Air is drawn in beneath the uh, beneath the piston. As it brings down, it's forced out of this uh, crankcase into these transfers and into the combustion chamber. Now, one thing about a two-stroke configuration, in case you're not real familiar with it, that I need to go over right quick, is how it works with this. This is a little bitty crank case that I've taken apart uh, just to, for the purpose of this illustration. Now, the true stroke cylinder will sit on just like this. See those two little leaflet valves right here? They help it line up nicely. And you see these two little cut out ramp looking guides? These are what correspond to the transfers, which are these things, and we'll go over those in more detail. But they do play a role in the intake part because as the piston ascends, this allows air fuel mixture to be drawn in underneath the piston as it as the piston is rotating see there would be a piston here connected to the crank as it rotates and as it as it descends it forces air out the air that was just drawn in through the intake forces it out into a transfer so that's a little part I guess no matter which section of the ports I'm going over you need to understand because that's critical so anyway let's go back to the intake port talk about it variations of it so we have an intake port here, and this is a fairly large one, like I said, because it's um, it's a uh, set up for a reed block. Now you can also have one set up like this, where you have uh, two bilateral ones. Um, this is for a twin cylinder two-stroke, and uh, there's a couple different configurations besides just the reed block and uh, piston ported. Uh, smaller two strokes like this. You can also have a valve, a uh, rotary valve that can rotate in front of this, uh, be a little bit different than this, but rotate in front of this 
in taking control of the timing and opening and closing that. You don't see that as much on modern two strokes, but there was in particular some KX 125s that had that rotary valve system that were friggin' awesome. They, they kicked butt. But um, you can also have direct port injection two strokes nowadays, uh, which is where the air is really all that's coming through here, and there are injectors uh, placed here on the transfers actually inject directly into the combustion chamber so you don't have to worry with that air fuel mixture uh, as it travels through uh, this part. Now for those, some of the parts I tell you about the texture and stuff and uh, the sizes and volumes won't really reply because when you move the uh, fuel injection back to here, back into this stage, uh, you've taken a lot of the variables out of there. But anyway, for all intents and purposes, let's talk about intakes on a uh, two stroke set up like this on a rebound uh, because you can do a lot of porting to these piston ported ones but really you're fairly limited to enlarging this intake this intake uh, port right here and the things I will tell you there some people feel like they can just increase this uh, the overall dimensions here and get more air and fuel through yeah you create more of a potential for air and fuel to get through because you create a, lar a larger cross section. A larger cross section is just a larger port, basically. Uh, but you still have the same volume of air and, air and fuel mixture displaced by the ascending, uh, I mean by the descending piston. So you're, when you start increasing this cross sectional area, you start decreasing velocity, and you have to think about you need so much velocity coming across the carburetor. Uh, particularly to atomize and aerate that's, that's, uh, the jets and whatnot. So just increasing this cross section uh, or the size of this port is not always the best idea. You can start to lose velocity there. Uh, now again, if you're using a direct, if you're dealing with a direct uh, port injection, that doesn't really apply because uh, it's just moving the air. But anyway, as you increase cross sectional volume, cross sectional area you can decrease uh, velocity because you still have the same volume displaced by the piston moving up and down. Now if you bore this out and increase that or you increase your stroke, guess what? You increase the volume. So yeah, you can do things at that point to compensate by increasing this intake forward. But uh, you know, that's saying if you increase the bore or stroke. So that's a, that's a different subject. Uh, let's get back to the sections of the intake port. So, Two things you'll probably notice right here are these little bridges because this is those are bridged intake port. What these function to do is to keep the piston as it travels downward in this uh, in the combustion chamber. These little bridges serve as guides to keep on to keep that piston from rocking so much from coming out in here into this very large intake and rocking. So that they are functional. Now I didn't port this uh, particular cylinder. I would have done it slightly different. Uh, let me tell you, my approach would be back here uh, on these bridges. I would have recessed them ever so slightly with the gradient back here, slightly recessed back this way, uh, simply because due to thermodynamics, this thinner metal of the bridge will start to uh, heat up. And it can, I'm saying it always will, but it can start to bow out into the combustion chamber and rub the bottom of the piston skirt. So I would, I would create a slight radius on, on the combustion side, on this side in that case. Do I think it's absolutely necessary? No, not really, because I've seen plenty of setups where they don't. So, yeah. Um, the other thing is, when you're porting, uh, you may want to watch, particularly on setups like this, uh, you can see these two little, hopefully you can see these two little black tongues that stick down here and here. Uh, Yes, these little dips like this uh, can obstruct airflow slightly, but then they're put there for a reason. They function the same as these pistons move up and down in the combustion chamber. They function the same way as a bridge does. They reduce the amount of rock into this intake, uh, large void of the intake. And they uh, help the pit keep the piston from rocking. So that's what the bridges do, and uh, you know you, you need to live in, in there. There's the they create structural integrity and 
a guide for the piston. So a lot of functions don't just cut these out. Just want to throw that out there. Um, when I'm applying my texture, I apply it to everything. Let me talk about the textured intake for just a minute, or the textured finish on an intake. The reason I like these on passive air intakes is because this texture, you can probably see it in some of my other videos better, but this slight smooth texture to this uh, increases surface area, which decreases, it starts to help decrease the surface tension. So fuel droplets, uh, you know, as they come through, the, as the, you have a ch charged air mass coming through here, it has the uh, vaporized fuel in it from the carburetor. As it's coming through here, fuel droplets will tend to adhere to this less, and there's also the, uh, so that, that's good, and they'll tend to dissipate quicker. And then there's also the air boundary layer that's created. Now, we don't really need to get into the physics of this, of that, other than to say now, in a pressurized system, uh, I would take a different, a different approach to the finish. I would have it a lot more smooth because the air boundary lever moves out because this whole area is pressurized, whereas in, in this setting where it's non-pressurized, what all that's drawing that air into this intake is the ascent of the piston creating a low pressure area, obviously back here in the transfers and in the crankcase. Uh, so there's different dynamics that start to occur there. I, I'm sure there's plenty of trolls that'll come through here and argue this, that, and the other about I, I don't really care. I'm just telling you, most professionals will put that on there because it works. So uh, moving on from the finish, um, and yes, I put that finish on piston ported ones as well. Um, moving on from that, now let's talk about these little auxiliary boost or boised in ports that you'll see. That will be these little ports right back here. Uh, they can either be created um, by a tuner, or sometimes they come this way from the factory. Uh, it just depends on the kind of uh, what kind of motor you got. Um, a lot of blasters and banshees, I kind of see people add those, and there's other, a little bit higher end uh, two strokes where those come sort of from the factory. But what these, these uh, function as is they allow even more air and fuel to go, move back in here into the, uh, into the transfer. See, they open up right down in here. Uh, to, this would be the crank, just like we showed in the last, uh, in the first part. Uh, you'd have the crankcase sitting on here. So they allow more fuel and air to be moved. So you can see this goes right back in here, comes out the intake. This goes right back in here, comes out the intake. They're just more openings for more fuel and air to be dumped in there. In fact, we got little cheater ones right here, pew, pew, and right like that. They do the same function. They're allowing more air and fuel to be sucked into this um, easier and quicker because you have a higher cross-sectional volume, potential volume that can be drawn into the crankcase. Uh, and as you have higher potential volume, it's easier for the air to move. So thus you can uh, move air quicker so and uh, more efficiently because it has less, has fewer walls to come in contact with, which is where you run into the resistance. So. That's kind of what these little boys then ports you'll see on the sides there. Now this one's been opened up a lot. This area through here, here have both been opened up. Now notice they left the bridge, which I would do as well, obviously, because of its structural integrity and uh, its resistance to piston rock. So that's good. Uh, the only thing I, I might have done different, uh, maybe it's hard to tell from the different, but this window here is slightly asymmetric to this one. I don't think that affects performance that much. It's just that I'm OCD and I would have wanted them to match. So anyway, um, so now you can see where these parts, these boys and ports here and here empty into the uh, into the crank case to get more air and fuel in there. Now there's another part to it that uh, also helps, and that's this little ramp port right back here that you can see has been raised up and uh, widened. Uh, compared to the factory. And what they've done is cut this out. Now the way you do this is with a right angle tool. Uh, little straights like this won't work very well. You watch on my uh, other videos, you'll see me using 1MC or 1A2 and you can just get right in there the same way this is a right angle and just cut all that out. Fairly easy. Now this little ramp right up here, uh, <clears throat> what's nice is because of how it's angled, 
because of how it's angled right there, it tends to force the air up into the combustion chamber, which is, which is good. So the air coming through this little booster port actually doesn't go down into, the, into this, uh, down below the piston like most of the rest. It actually is transferred above the crown of the piston and uh, goes up into the combustion chamber. And you'll see they kept it right in line with the height of the transfers here, which is consistent with what I recommend and most other tuners recommend. So see this line on the transfers? Uh, you typically don't want your upper line on the intake to go above that. And they've also ramped it quite nicely uh, to allow, allow maximum trajectory up and into the combustion chamber, which is great. Uh, I think that's a, that's a good approach, and that's the same one I would use. So that tells you a little bit about the, um, about the intake port and what it does, how it functions, and different little things that you can do to boost it, like this little cheater port right here, or auxiliary port, whatever you want to call it, like these boost ports here and here, and like the little auxiliary or Boysden ports here and here. All these function in the same manner as they control trajectory, which means how, what direction, and what velocity the air moves through, and they increase volume. They increase the total, because you got to understand those are two different terms. They increase the total potential uh, amount of air that can actually be moved through these ports. So that's the function of the um, intake port. Uh, like I said, as soon as I turn this camera off, I'll probably think about 10 other things that I could have told you. But uh, I think that'll help you out. I'll give you a little idea of what you shoot for when porting. Like I said, I recommend a, uh, a uh, textured finish on uh, passive intakes, such as this setup, such as most. I don't recommend just increasing this, the actual size or cross-sectional volume of this intake port because you lose, you can lose velocity and uh, interfere with the actual function of your carburetor. So, just a couple quick things. Hope that helps. And uh, remember, you can find me online at ccspeciallytool.com or you can chat with me on twostrokecentral.com.